Hi, my name is Robin Wong and in this video I want to talk about the ways that you can improve your photography game without upgrading your gear. If you are an experienced photographer and you've been doing photography for a while and you know what you're doing, of course this particular video is not designed for you. I'm sure you have some friends who have just started photography. They bought their first camera and within two months they were not happy with the camera and the lenses that they have. And they thought, hey, if I get that L lens or if I upgrade my camera to a higher grade camera, my photography will improve. And if you truly look at these people, they still don't really fully understand the basics of photography. They don't understand how shutter speed works. They don't know what the rare sync flash is. They don't really know how to control the eyes or to optimize for shooting in certain situations. There were still so many things that they can do to improve their photography. But the first thing that came in mind is, I need better gear. I need to upgrade to compete with all my other peers. I need to get better in the game. And the only way to do so is by having a better camera and lens. I think that is not the solution for these people. And I'm exploring five ways that you can do to improve your photography game without upgrading your camera or lenses. Let's do this. Number one, slow down your shutter speed. Shutter speed is a parameter that you can control in your camera in any interchangeable lens camera. I believe shutter speed is underused and a lot of people have not unlocked the full potential of the camera without playing around with the shutter speed. To be able to freeze motion, we need to use very fast shutter speed. However, if we want to induce motion or capture that blurriness of the motion in the photograph, we will have to slow down the shutter speed. We are talking about the slow shutter speed, we are talking about capturing motion and showing movement in photographs. By showing movement in photograph, you're adding another layer of drama. People have this misconception that photographs are static. They are not. Photographs can be dynamic as well. You can show movement in your photographs and these movements are shown by the motion blur that is captured in your photograph. There are two ways to go about this. First is to capture the subject that is moving and make them blur. And secondly, you can also do panning shots where the subject which is in motion is clear and the background is blur. Either way, all you have to do is experiment with your camera, go to shutter priority or shoot in full manual mode, dial down the shutter speed. Then you'll notice that this particular photography effect will instantaneously improve the outcome of your photographs. Tip number two, take the camera away from the eye level. When we shoot with a camera, especially if the camera has a viewfinder, we tend to shoot through the viewfinder all the time. And when we stand, all the photographs that we take through the viewfinder will look like as if they were taken from the same perspective. The same height, the same level, everything looks very ordinary because we all look through the eye level, everyone looks through the same thing again and again. One quick way to improve your photography instantly is by taking the camera away from the eye level. Either you go lower or higher and you can use the LCD screen. You have a tilt screen built into your camera. This screen will help you to compose your shots, go as low as the floor. And you can find perspectives from a higher vantage point, climb a stairs, climb a hill, go up a building, right? Shooting from low angle and high angle will instantly improve the kind of photographs that you take. One of the ways to add impact in your photograph is to show your audience something they have not seen before. Or you show the same thing they have seen but in a different perspective. Using low and high angle will definitely change the perspective even if you're shooting the same particular subject. So don't be lazy guys, don't just stick the camera to your eye. Take it away from the eye, explore different angles and you will come home with more interesting photographs. Tip number three, decisive moment. In almost all kind of photography, there is that one particular moment. It happens in a very short duration of time. You have a very short window of opportunity when everything comes together nicely to form that one most dramatic moment. Decisive moment was a phrase that was coined by André Cotillard-Bresson. 
I think it is not just applicable for street photography, but it's applicable to all kinds of photography, including portraits, landscapes, even performance and action photography. If you are shooting sports, of course, there's that one particular defining moment that shows all the moment and drama in that sport that you're shooting, right? If you're doing street photography, all the moments are very mundane and boring and then something happens. That particular action is what you should be aiming for. If you're doing portrait photography, out of the 20 photographs of the same composition you take of the person, same photograph, but there is this one or two photographs that everything just comes together nicely. That portrait, that person looks at you with that beautiful expression and you have that very, very small chance to make it happen. It is not easy figuring out the decisive moment of each photograph that you take. And you realize that the more you try to hunt for a decisive moment, the more misses that you will get. If it is so easy, everyone is a photographer now. Everyone can do professional photography. Finding that decisive moment is something that will elevate your photography. It has nothing to do with the camera that you use. It's nothing to do with the lens that you use. It is how ready you are, how aware you are of your surroundings and how reflexively fast you can react to that particular moment. All this requires training, experience, and it also depends on how much time you spend on photography. How much do you put yourself out there to allow yourself more chance of succeeding in capturing that one rare shot? Focus on decisive moment and trust me, you will get more interesting photographs at the end of the day. Tip number four, composition and framing. This is very similar to my point number two, where you take the camera away from the eye for interesting perspective. But composition is a lot more than just high and low angle and interesting perspective. It is how you frame your subject, how you find order in the mix of chaos, and how you make that one subject pop out of your frame. It is also about arranging different elements so that they work with each other within a photograph. Composition is not easy, it is not that simplistic. There are many rules and many philosophies that is being discussed over the years. The popular one being the rule of thirds. I am not going to dive deep into the theory of compositions or the best practices of composition because at the end of the day, it is up to you to choose and pick what work for your kind of photography. At the beginning of my photography involvement, I follow strictly on the rule of thirds. But as I move along, I realize that rule of thirds is very limiting. So these days, I just compose instinctively. The most important question that you have to ask yourself is, after you take a photograph, does it look right? Does it feel balanced? Is this what you want to do? If there is something wrong, if there is something off with the photograph, ask yourself, what can be done in the composition that can improve the balance of the photograph? If you step back a little bit, or if you move closer, or if you put the subject a bit to the left or the right, or if you go completely to around the subject, will that change as well? So it is a question that only you can answer, but I have a recommended book on this particular topic, which have helped me a lot, and I strongly believe that it can help you as well. If you have not checked it out, please do read The Photographer's Eye by Michael Freeman. I have learned so much reading the book, I have applied some of the principles, and that book dives deep into how a photographer's eye work, how the psychology works behind every photograph, and what actually works in some situations. And finally, tip number five, improve your shooting discipline. This is not the case for experienced photographers or photographers who have been shooting for a while, but for a lot of newcomers to photography, this is a particular struggle that I observe in a lot of people. There are just so many things to take care of when you take a photograph. You have to make sure your shutter speed is fast enough so that you don't get camera shake. And you have to make sure your shutter speed is fast enough so that your subject is not blur. Or if you want the subject to be blurry, you have to make sure your shutter speed is slow enough. Then you have to find the optimum ISO for each situation. The camera can decide the auto ISO to use, but it's really ideal for what kind of photography that you do. Then what is the optimum aperture? You have to think about whether you want to separate the subject from the background or you want to have everything clear. 
Then you have to think about composition. You have to think about autofocus. Make sure that you get critically sharp autofocus. Then there is white balance, there's metering. There are just so many things to think about. I haven't even talked about lighting or where the photographer should stand or think about the subject that they are shooting. And I just talk about the other factors like decisive moment. If I were to list the things that I go through my mind before I press the shutter button, the list will be very long. But a lot of these things, like shutter speed, ISO, aperture, framing, autofocus, the more you do photography, the more experienced you are, the more they come to you as a second nature. It is already ingrained in your automated brain function that when you look at something, you will adjust in these things without having to put too much brain power or thinking behind the shot. Like for example, if I want to blur off the background of a shot, then I will quickly select a longer focal length, turn to aperture parity, dial down my aperture without even thinking much. My mind should be focused on the subject that I'm shooting. I should be focused on the lighting, the composition, the drama and the decisive moment. I should not be thinking about the camera settings because if I spend too much time worrying about what lens to use, what's the optimal settings, what is the eyes or how do I get my photos sharp, if I worry about all these things, then I'm being distracted from taking the best possible photograph. You should push yourself and train yourself to a point where all these technicalities of the camera should come as a second nature and they can be fully automated and you shouldn't be spending too much time fiddling with the camera to achieve the desired effect. Because at the end of the day, what makes a great photograph has nothing to do about dynamic range. It's nothing to do about how clean your image is when you're using high ISO. It is not about how sharp your image is. It is not about how many megapixels you have. It's not about that beautiful bouquet. It is about the idea of your photograph. It's about the message that you send. It is about the feelings and emotion. It is about the drama in your photograph. What you are shooting. Those are the things that matter way more than the camera technicalities. I am not saying that the camera technicalities are not important. I'm saying that you shouldn't be worrying too much about those things. You should be disciplined enough to be able to control them reflexively without spending too much effort. If you cannot adjust your camera settings at that level, then before you consider upgrading to the next camera or lens, Maybe you should use your current camera, spend more time with it, give yourself another half a year, a year, even more to fully understand how the camera works, practice it, shoot more and more with the camera, do it until you don't make any mistakes ever again. There you go, I have shared five tips on how to improve your photography without actually upgrading your gear. I surely hope that you have found this sharing useful and my encouragement is for you not to spend too much money. Instead, you should be having a positive, enjoyable experience using whatever camera that you have with you now. Go out and start making images happen. You can get great images even if you don't have the best camera out there. The best photographers don't necessarily use the best cameras and lenses. And the photographers who use the best cameras and lenses do not necessarily make the best photographs. Photography is about you. Photography is about what you want to say and what you want to share with the world. So make sure that you go out and take more photographs. If you have found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I will definitely see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.